Hey, everybody. So well, do your thing. Hey, it's running Hope Unfiltered, real raw relevant. So glad you're here today. What didn't, an awesome day. Didn't I do the last one without you? No. What was it I had to come out here and do? Oh, me and Chaz did one. That was gone. several weeks ago, baby. My time in a little bit off? We've been very, very, very busy. Well, we're and about to get like really busy. Yes. What, very. what we have been is nothing like what's getting ready to hit. So anyway. Yeah, next week. But I you think have you've just got finished. You got three speaking engagements next week. In three different states. I know. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, we've just come off of our women's conference. So amazing. So look, amazing. 60 seconds. Tell them what happened. I don't even have words. It and was you got just another so one coming up. God. It was so God. Um, how he orchestrated all the speakers and all the messages and the expectancy of the women who came. Just, you know, they were so happy, so filled. Largest registration yeah. ever. And it was just a, it was a wonderful time from top to bottom. It was just over the top. I'm cracking a cough drop, by the way, feeling Again. Little, yep, because I'm but always yeah, talking. I love those times with the ladies. And we had iChurch members fly that in. That was big. That was huge. Our I church got to spend is our time virtual church community. I'm not talking about, Watch you know, live streaming or what. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these are people that we pastor. We pastor them virtually, and they are members of Redemption. Although they did not attend a physical location. Yeah. And that's we, hard we for people to understand. Yes. They think they're, I, people, I'll say, are you our church? They're like, yeah, I'm our church. I'm like, but how do you watch? And they're like, I just log on on YouTube or I'll watch on Facebook Live. That's I'm like, not no, our church. that's not our church. You got to go to I dot church and then you log in that way and you can interact with everybody who's it's all a community over of believers. the world you know who identify as redemption it's is my three, church it's about three thousand people yeah and uh our groups our kids our youth mm -hmm. our prayer our everything you're entering a virtual community of believers that is crazy good well they're starting to come <laughs> more and more that was to a lot so of our cool conferences, and they and they've and they've been going back and forth in chat rooms with each other. But you said it was so for cool years. to watch them yeah. meet each other they for the had first known time. Each other, some of them for years through chat, but had never met in person. And they ran into the room because we had a dinner. We hosted our church dinner, and they would run in the room. They go, "Oh my gosh, you're Heidi! <laughs> oh my god!" And they would just hug. They're like, "You're taller in person." Mm. You know, it was just so cool. To watch God bring that community and I just together. got off a Zoom call with our church pastor, uh, Ashley, and she was just talking about how cool it was. And we're doing it again on the East, East Coast. Coast. yeah. And uh, we're going to have uh, several more of them. them. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a dinner for them. So if you're part of that community as well, of all, all the things that we do media-wise, we'd love to see you there. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about several things, Ronaldo, but we're going to talk about managing disappointment. Mm. I mean, because, you know, we all have it. We really do. We've had some <laughs> disappointing things today happen, right? I mean, over our life, life just, I, listen, let me stop right here. Christians do a poor job at managing the curveballs of life. Because we get so bum-fuzzled at, oh, I thought life was just supposed to be good all the time. We, we don't understand times and seasons. We don't understand God knows more than we know. We don't understand processes. The spirit realm, the we natural don't understand. realm. We don't. And we get so knocked off our rocker when things happen. And the bottom line is we've just got to trust God with our life. And another way to, to get the will of God to happen in our life is to pray in the spirit. We're going to talk about that at the end. So, well, let's we, start we with decided to do this uh, about half an hour ago when I got a phone call that was absolutely a kick in the gut. Just a kick in the gut. It was not anybody with a family, not anything like that would affect people. I'm just talking about something that would have been believing. Looks like it's going yeah. one way and you have no reason to believe and it. And there's a domino effect of many other blessings yeah. springing out from it. Then all of a sudden, the whole rug That's right. is just jerked out from under you. And so it was right before we had to come and do the podcast. And you said, well, what are we going to do the podcast on? I said, why don't we do it on managing disappointment? <laughs> let me let me make a few statements because I know where we're going to end up. We're going to end up in actually what you and I are going to do later today. Yes. We're going to go pray in the spirit. We are. Though you don't know who that is know what that is and how that works. I'm going to explain it probably in the last five to seven minutes. But let me just come back on the disappointment thing. 
I have made this statement, and I'll add number two to it. What separates those who succeed from those who don't? I said several weeks ago in a podcast, I don't know what the podcast was now, but I just remember saying it in this venue, that I think what separates successful people from unsuccessful is how they respond to failure. Mm. Because failure is inevitable. Right. Failure does not in any way whatsoever discriminate. It doesn't care who you are. It hits us all. It doesn't care what level you are. It doesn't, it doesn't care where you live. doesn't care how much money you have. doesn't care the color of your skin. It doesn't care anything. don't care who your daddy's last name failure, is. And when you say failure, that means like pain and <clears throat> that's, that's, trouble that's, and traumatic. I tried yeah. and I failed. Yeah. I tried and I came up short. I, 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 st- I went, I launched out in faith and started my own company, yeah. and now I'm bankrupt. And, you know, and we can spiritualize it, and, and God's crushing me, and I'm in the oil press, and we— <laughs> Christians have got all these things we do. Fact is, you launched out and thought it was going to happen, and it it did did. not happen. Okay, and what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? I married this guy. Believed it was the love of my life. You thought that he was this, and you found out. A year later. Yeah, a year later, he's that, and everything's been a lie, and the rug of your life has been jerked out from, from under you. You thought you got your dream job. You were there three weeks. They laid you off. They didn't even tell you why they laid you yeah. off. You done gone out and bought a new car. You done got a house with a mortgage. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. How you respond in those moments. Successful people are, are not people that don't have failures. Right. Successful people are people that make great decisions in the failure. They get back up. It has been my experience, Hope, you can chime in here because we may want to tell a few of ours. It has been my experience that failures usually bring what I call defining moments. It's true. I I can't look back over any of my great victories and say that victory was a defining moment. I got four, five off the top of my head moments of despair Mm -hmm. where I can tell you the decisions that I made in that moment, define the trajectory of the next decade of it's my true. life. And I don't want to do all the talking. You can chime Good in here any way you want to. <laughs> but so, you know, for those of you who have just experienced, this is not disappointment. This is failure. Disappointment's number two. I'm talking about number one. So if you have just had a significant failure in your life, I don't mean you went bowling last night and didn't hit your normal high score. I think what I'm talking about. I'm talking about life Life was headed one way, and it dealt you something yeah. else. Totally out of left field, totally unexpected, and now all the cards have changed. And what are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Are you going to give up? Are you going to get bitter? Are you going to get resentful? Are you going to get terrible to deal with? Are you going to be hateful? You know, Are you going to be a terrible husband or terrible father, and nobody wants to partner with you? What, what are you going to do yeah. out of that? And I don't have a one, two, three, four, five, but I do know the fact is, at at my times of failure, uh, when when me and Hope separated, I knew uh, the Lord spoke to me one night and said, "You thought the greatest sermon would be preached with your lips," He said, "But Ron, it will be preached with your life." Basically, choose carefully. Mm. God was telling me the next few decisions you make yeah. will determine whether or not you'll even be in this ten years from now. And it was at a point of devastation. Yeah. yeah. I think the hardest things, the greatest, let me say, the greatest things to grab a hold of and the greatest, sweetest times and seasons of our life have come after the hardest. Mm-hmm. I'd say that. The toughest, the, the most strenuous, the most painstaking the sweetest times have come after those. You have to depend on God because the fact is it's a double negative. Your most important decisions are being made at the time you're yeah. probably least able to make yeah, them. when you're pinned up against your, the wall. Your, emo- your emotions are all over the place. Um, honestly, your problem is, you know, like this. You know, it's all, it's as small as a cough drop. Yeah, but you got it. But so it's, up it's against so your close, eye. you can't see anything else it's true. because it's right up here in your face. And so you got to you got to look at yourself. You know, when I have been dealt failure, number one, first of all, ask your question. The Bible talks about examine your ways. Yeah. 
you know, the first thing I do when something don't happen right is I go back and say, okay, God. Did I miss you? Yeah. Did I sin? Did, did, I, I, did I do something is wrong? Is there something in my life yeah. that I screw up? Was I not listening? Did you try to tell me something? I was hard-headed. Uh, I don't go back and start pointing fingers and blaming. I start True. saying, is there anything wrong with Ron? Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord, was there anything wrong with what I was believing for? Yeah. Okay, did you really say do that? Did I go out behind my house and try to walk on the water on my swimming pool because Peter walked on the water? Or did you tell me to walk on water? It's good. Did, did, did you good. speak to me? Was this something you even wanted in the first place? Because God is not obligated for visions. He didn't dream. It's good. He's not obligated for that. And, and then third, third thing I tell people when they fail, who are you around? Who are you, who are you with? Who are you partner with? Who are you hanging around? Who are you yeah. dating? Who are you running with at those times? All of these things have to happen, and then you've got to come to a place at this moment. This is the way I tell people. When, you've got a, when you're in failure and a lot of things are stacked up against you, you solve the problem closest, closest to, to you. you. Jesus did not feed 5,000. I know that little thing in your Bible at the top of the paragraph says he did. <laughs> Jesus fed 12. The 12 didn't feed 5,000. The 12 fed 50 at a time. Right. They broke you them break down, down in sides of 50. So Jesus took an overwhelming problem. Yeah. And look into at this. Size and to bite sized yeah. pieces, and he broke it down. And that's what I tell people. Break your problem down, and then what is the one closest to you? I'm giving valuable information right now. When you solve that one, go to the next closest yeah. one to you. When you solve that, go to, but don't step out and say, I got to solve all 716 of them today. Okay. What's the one closest to you? So those are some things. Number two, the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. To me, 55 years old, been in this 33 years. That's how do they manage disappointment. Okay. Before we come back, before we go to that. We're going to go to our sponsor. It's Nutrafol. And we've talked about these guys several times. But, I mean, Ron, you can be a testimony to Nutrafol. You've been taking Nutrafol two or three months? Two bottles. Two bottles. <coughs> so that's two months. Can you tell a difference? Can you tell a I difference? I can. I can. In your hair. Your oh, hair. Wow. And not just. I'm talking about even the growing of Texture. your hair. We've had to cut your hair a lot more, your neck. It's just growing. It's becoming healthy. So over 80 million men and women in the U.S. experience thinning okay, go hair. Go ahead. Go ahead. They experience thinning hair. Yet it is still not openly talked about, which can make going through it just feel scary and stressful. And it adds to the problem. Well, Ron's tried Nutrafol and it works. It's the number one dermatology recommended number hair growth one. supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage for men and women. Did you know that there are multiple causes of thinning hair? Nutrafol is the hair growth supplement that goes beyond genetics to target stress. No, we don't have that. Hormone problems in our 55. Nah. Nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle factors that may be impacting your hair. Thinning is different for men and women. Nutrafol has multiple unique formulas for men and women to provide exactly what they need based on their biology and age. In clinical studies, 72% of men saw more scalp coverage and 86% of women saw improved hair growth after six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code RAH to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere. It's totally, it's only available in the U.S. customer for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code RAH. Don't forget to do that. Let me ask you a question about that. Why is it when you get a little older that hair stops growing on your head but starts growing in, in your ear? <laughs> in and, your chin and, <laughs> and your nose. <laughs> I went in there the other night. Now, y'all, I hope, hope don't mind. I hope it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. But I went there the night. She had a little tweezer. She's doing, I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm getting these little hairs off my chin. I'm like, I don't want to know that. 
And it's the same thing I, I did to you I today. I don't know that. And then she came to me this morning. I said, come here. She said, I got to get rid of that. And I had a, a old wild. Old man look, hairs. I had a wild eyelash, didn't You I? did. You had one hair coming out here, and you had old man look, hairs in your ear. Look, the, the, out of my ears, out of my, just stay right here. <laughs> just grow on my head. Just we're fine if you're it just It might be neutrophil. But anyway, could be make it grow, making all my hairs grow and all my Managing eyelashes grow. Disappointment. <clears throat> Number two, uh, people that succeed versus those that tend not to be as successful is I have I have encountered many people that when, once they get disappointed, hope they just never recover. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They just spiral. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's a spiritual thing. I don't know if it's the a personality profile type, maybe a little bit of all of it. Uh, but there's some people that just they just don't seem to be able to pull out of it mm. if they ever get the wind knocked out of them. Yeah. And I don't know what that is. They haven't built endurance. Everything in life that is sweet, that is significant, that is successful has gone through some type of process. Yeah, it just does. There's, you can't get food on your table without it going through a process. You can't give olive oil to cook your food in unless there's a process. Yeah. You can't put a diamond on your fiance's finger without that rock going through a process. You can't mature without going through right. a process. When I was growing at night, I used to have terrible leg aches because you're going through a process. Stretching. All of life has process. So to arrive at any destination, there is a process involved. Mm. And usually it's not the destination that defines you, it's the process. Yeah, because what is the process what is the pro for, Ron? What the, is the, the process is for Potential. The process, the process is for potential. so that you can reach the potential. The potential, and you can maintain it when you get there. Yes, because I've always said it's a lot easier to obtain than it is to maintain. So the the process is enabling you to maintain the blessing. Right. So when the blessing breaks out, You've, the process prepares you. You have built endurance. The process has prepared you for it. So if you're one of those people that, you know, one thing can happen to you and you're still reeling from it, mm. you know, five years later, I encourage you uh, today to dial in tight because I'm going to try to give you some things in the next few minutes. Um, got a lot of wonderful things happening at Redemption, uh, Redemption Everything. Redemption now is a big word. There's a lot yeah. of wheels and subsidiaries and arms of redemption. There's a, there's a lot of nonprofits under redemption. But... Um, there was there was one big thing that was going to have an effect on everything, and we we got a call that it's either delayed or denied, literally right before we come in and did a podcast. And I mean, and uh, and everything was supposed to be finished by the end of office hours today, so it was like a, I mean, you came it was in like and, a what? Yeah, I mean, you walked in the room and a I was I was sitting what? there looking like you know I was sitting there like wow. Really, I got to deal with this. Yeah, like all the blood had been drained from yeah. your body. And um, and and I've a lot of machinery has already been enacted for all this. And so you're sitting there thinking about, you know, what do I do for this? Yeah, what, what do I, I do? do for that? You got all these what I do's coming up, but the first thing you got to do is manage those extreme feelings. Yeah, I'm sitting in a, I'm sitting in a chair in just my real office. Real feelings. I really just kind of want everybody to go away and leave me alone and just kind of let me process the fact that I am God's man of faith and power, that I am the one I want my whole family to believe in, to know that my dad has a relationship with God, all those things. But the fact is, I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed. It's a, it's a, it's a curveball. It's going to cost me a lot of work. It's going to cost me a lot of energy. Uh, to redirect and to navigate a new path. And, and I'm sitting there, I'm disappointed, and I'm dreading all the energy I got to pour in uh, to trying to define what do I do from here. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know. The principles the, we're talking about apply to everybody's disappointment. But here's, here's where we're different. You can't be... You can't be like a person who has no God. Right. And there is one major consistency in my life. When I am down, I go to the rock. Yep. That is higher than yep. I. Yep. 
I probably won't see you tonight. You'll probably be in the sanctuary till midnight when, praying. When I'm down, I go to God. When you're disappointed, disappointment is usually tied to unexpectation. There was something unexpected. Yeah. Or either you wouldn't have been disappointed. You got a result you weren't expecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a response you weren't expecting. You got an answer you weren't expecting, and you're disappointed. I remember Miles Monroe talked about this, meaning it's, it's the same word as miss, appointment. Disappointment is a missed appointment. Yeah. You had an appointment with something, and it was missed. Yeah. And so what I do, I don't have a one, two, three, four, five like I did on the first one. Who are you hanging around with? Mm-hmm. Well, managing disappointment is where do you draw from? Because life just went out of you. Right. You know? You set your expectations. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't serve God without setting an expectation. You can't, you know, the man of God told him, said, strike the ground. And he only struck it three times. And the man of God was furious because he, you got to expect more. Did God deliver us from low expectation? But the vulnerability is sometimes you expect things and they just don't pan out. Right. And you don't have a reason for it. And you're low. It knocks you down. Yeah, you get it, low. It does. So where do you go? What do you do? Here's what I do. So the first thing the Bible says, building yourself self up in the faith. Yeah. Okay. Most My faith, faith has been diminished. Now doubt and unbelief wants to set in. That's right. And the Bible says that he who is double-minded can receive nothing mm-hmm. from the Lord. So I can't be, well, I sort of believe and I'm sort of in doubt. That a double-minded man will receive nothing. So I've got to stay in faith. I've got disappointing news, but my faith cannot suffer. Whew, boy, that's a hard demand. It is. So number one, I know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I got to get in a place where I got to hear God speak. Right. And number two, I build back up my faith praying in the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to act like we have an audience that has no idea what I'm talking about okay. here. Okay. Most of them probably don't. Okay. There is a subsequent experience with God that was the original intent of Jesus coming in the first place. And it was that the same spirit that Jesus had in him, Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the works that he did, he did by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The only difference between Jesus and us, the Bible says he had the spirit without measure. Right. We have a measure. We have a measure. The Bible says we've been given a measure of grace, a measure of gift, a measure of faith. We've been given a measure of everything. Jesus functioned without a measure. So... Jesus came to remove our sins so that the same Holy Spirit that lived in him by which he did signs, wonders, miracles, and knew everything that he knew came by that Holy Spirit. He wants that now to dwell on the inside of us. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 6 that we now are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. The Bible says that one of the gifts that the Holy Spirit brings is the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues, which we have a whole generation of believers that know nothing about it because we have a whole generation of teachers that won't teach it. Right. It's not talked about. Okay. It's not talked it's about. It's too spooky. It's not sung about. It's not written about. And it doesn't make for polished church. Right. And we don't want to make people feel uncomfortable in our no offense age that we live in. Ronald, so you we said take you weren't going to We're meddle. taking the Holy Spirit out of it. Well, here's the danger. In moments like this, Hope, the reason I don't go into a downward spiral that lasts seven years mm-hmm. is because I know who to go. I know how That's to build right. myself back up. Yeah, the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. So when you pray in the Spirit, it is a language, a heavenly language that God has given you. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are praying the mysteries of God. Yeah, the things you don't know. Okay, Romans 8 says, when we don't know what to pray as we ought, the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession. It's, I don't know how it can be any more plain than people just overlooking it and saying, I'm not going to read that page. Right. I, skip I, that I just page. don't understand it unless they just say, I'm skipping that page. He says, the Holy Spirit himself. Okay. I got hit with news. I do not understand it. I don't know why. I can't answer any questions about it. If you started asking me, I'd let you say, I don't right. know. But I'm itching to go get with God. 
Because when I pray in the spirit, number one, the disappointment begins to be flushed mm -hmm. and dissipate. And I'm built and up. And I feel my inner man becoming strong again and my faith getting centered again. And I'm not moved by what I see here, touch, smell, taste, yeah. feel. In other words, my surroundings my has having no effect on me. strong. Because my spirit man is confident yes. and it's settled. And looking not at the things which are seen, I go to that verse all yeah, the time, but the, but the things, things which, which are, are unseen. unseen. When you pray in the spirit, you have transitioned out of the things around yes. you. It you bypasses have hit, your mind. You have, you have hit an eternal realm, yeah. an unseen realm, where all your answers lie anyway. Right. What you see will lie to you. Yeah. Changes, and, and, too. and hope the enemy will, will tend to let, I just may got an answer for myself. <laughs> Jesus told Peter when he wanted to come out of the boat in the storm, he said, come on. And he went and he stepped out. And the Bible says Jesus walked on water. Peter walked on water. He did not walk on water. Walk he on walked the on the word. If Jesus had not have said come, he would have sunk to the bottom That's of the right. sea. He had a word and that word let the miracle happen. That's right. Then the Bible says, and he saw the wind and the waves. Mm -hmm. And he began to sink. Do I focus on what he said or do I focus on the winds and the waves? It's good. Because wherever my focus is will determine whether I'm in disappointment or whether I'm in pain. That's good. There's always an assault on your senses at the moment God causes you to believe. Wants to give you bad information or let you see something to the contrary. Yeah. I've said many times the enemy's job is to build something around you that contradicts what's in yeah. you. Because God didn't lie and God <laughs> don't change his mind. Mm -mm, God doesn't change his mind. So I, I began to pray in the spirit, my heavenly prayer language that God has given me. And the Bible says, for the spirit knows the mind of God and prays in perfect accordance with mm -hmm. his will. That's Romans 8. You go to 1 Corinthians 14. It says that the mind is unfruitful when someone is praying in the spirit because in the spirit he utters mysteries. mysteries. So right now, what God's doing is technically a mystery to Ron Carpenter. Right. But in but the spirit, knows. in the spirit, I can utter mysteries. That's right. I can get Ooh. in one accord Hallelujah. with what's going on in spirit. So I can bypass the biases the limitations my wants, of my mind, my wants, desires, my, wants, my, desires, my agendas, yes. selfish ambitions, vanity, all these other things we got to make yeah. sure that they don't pollute the will of God. That's right. I can get, I can bypass every one of them. And when I pray in the spirit, it is the spirit of sonship crying out Abba to Abba Father. Father. So the spirit of a son crying out to the Ooh. father. So when I do that, when I'm praying like that, I have moved away from natural things. I have began to enter into spiritual things. Yes. And then I'm beginning to release out of my mouth faith for things that I do not know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I am right now in a state of it's a mystery and I do not know. Yes. I have no recourse in the Bible other than to pray in the Holy no, Spirit. No, that's it. So I told you today, I said, we got to pray in the Spirit for two straight days. We got to pray in the Spirit. I would just encourage those of you now say, Pastor Ron, I got to be honest with you. Uh, I was turned on to y'all's podcast by a friend of mine. I've never even heard what you're talking about. Number one, I'm sorry if that's true. That is a sad indictment against where we are as teachers with all TV, all the internet, all the That's Facebook right. lives, all the Instagram posts, and nobody even knows that the whole reason Jesus came was so that the Holy Spirit could have a personal relationship with you and you could walk in supernatural things and don't have to be moved by everything around you. So good. That was the whole intent of God in the first place. I apologize on behalf of the church if you've been with God any amount of time and this has not been made known to you. Yeah. Secondly, I would tell those of you who are facing major disappointment, go ask God to fill you with his wonderful Holy Spirit yes. and he will. And the Bible says, and they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Yeah. The Holy Ghost doesn't speak in tongues. He just brings to your you mind do. what to say. You do. And you give it a voice. That's and why then, it's the most holy faith. Yep. Yeah. 
too is because you don't understand what you're saying. I've it always, makes you feel I've always defined cuckoo. that. He says it's the most holy faith. Well, he didn't say it was holy faith. He didn't say it was more holy faith. He said it was the, most. Mm -hmm. You can't increase on most. So the most holy faith Ron Carpenter can operate in is praying to a God he can't see, he can't feel, in a language can't he touch, doesn't understand, and he's praying things he don't know in a language yeah. that he don't understand for results that he don't even know what they're supposed yeah, to be. And, and this is not praying in the spirit is not for show. It's not for church. It's not for no. uh, looking spiritual. It, it's for these things. It's for no. the mysteries of God to be revealed in your life. It's praying the will of God over your life and your situation and your circumstance. I am. Um, I just want to encourage somebody right now who is in the middle of not knowing and who's in the middle of managing your disappointment. My Bible tells me the way I build myself back up. How, how many times have we been knocked down to the ground? Yeah. I mean, just knocked down to the ground, you know, an hour before church. Yeah, yeah. With whatever it was, kids, yeah. money. Or, or 2.15 in the morning on yeah. Saturday night, or, you know, six hours before church. For, just knocked to yeah. the ground. Our marriage, I believe today our marriage is put back together because I committed to pray in the Spirit every single day for 30 days over our marriage. I prayed when I could see nothing, when when all hope was gone. I, I mean, there was nothing in the natural to say that our marriage was going to work. I prayed in the Spirit, and I prayed, and I travailed, and I cried, and I prayed, because I did not know what to pray. I had no words to say, God, what I needed, what I wanted, what I hoped to see, because you said no. It was over. It was gone. There was no hope, but I prayed in the Spirit and prayed in the Spirit. And who arrested you? The Spirit, the Spirit arrested God. you in the middle of in the, the night. night. In the night. And, um, you know, and when you pray in the Spirit, then you need to expect again. Yeah. Expect again. Yeah. You know, they were praying. The Bible says that Peter was in jail and in prison. And <clears> the <throat> saints were praying for him to be free. The angels came and threw open the doors. He was set free and went and knocked on the door and a girl named Rhoda, Rhoda. answered <laughs> and said she saw him and shut the door back in his face. Why? Because sometimes you're praying for something and really don't even believe don't God even can believe do it. Don't even believe God can do it. The answer showed up at the door <laughs> and they shut the door on the answer's face. So you expected and you got disappointed. Well, I ain't doing that again, Pastor. Because if you don't expect nothing, you don't have to worry about getting disappointed. That's a ridiculous way that to live. Is. You build yourself back up. So and good. And you place your expectations again and then watch God come through. Amen. I can't explain all the difficulties. I can't explain the times and seasons. But I will tell you this. It's a way to get out of being it. Being confident of this. Yeah. God who has begun a good work in you. We'll be faithful. We'll be faithful to complete it. It's good, Ryan. And with that, we let's conclude go this podcast. <laughs> with that, let's go pray in the spirit. We love you guys. We know life happens. Life happens to every single one of us. None of us are exempt. But listen, you have a God who loves you. You have a God who wants the best for you. And you need to get in one accord with him. Go pray in the spirit. We love you. Till next time, Ron and Hope Unfiltered.